Welcome to iPad Pros, the show all about professionals using iPad to be productive and get work done. It's a really new feature in iOS. You know, it's, it hasn't been around that long, but apps that support it can basically drag a color chip from themselves, just like you could drag a, a selection of a drawing. You tap and hold on the color, and then it turns into a little chip. And you pull it out of the app, and then you go into the other app where you're heading to your destination, into their color well or color picker or whatever, and then you drag it in there and release. And that color is transferred from one app to another. Welcome to iPad Pros. I'm Tim Chen, host of the show. Today in the show is Ged Mayhew of the Icon Factory, makers of Linea Sketch and Twitterific. We deep dive into Linea Sketch, which just launched version 2 with a ton of new enhancements. This is one of my favorite apps to take advantage of the Apple Pencil. I think even seasoned users of that app will learn a thing or two in this interview. I had a lot of fun talking with Ged, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. But before we get to that, I just want to share some quick thoughts about the recent Apple event focused on education, as well as this new low-cost iPad. So, first off, Apple Pencil support to this new $329 iPad is huge. That's really awesome. I'm glad that tech is going down the line. What's even cooler is this new CRAN support that has this new technology of talking with iPads over a single frequency custom chip, I guess, that's uh, allowing these to talk. It's not using Bluetooth, this new Logitech CRAN, but using this new connection protocol that hopefully will come to iPad Pros this summer with the launch of some new hardware. But I'm really curious about how th- on how this works. Uh, so the Apple Pencil, as many of you know, works with Bluetooth, and it only works with one iPad at a time. You have to stick it into the Lightning connector when you want to change over to a new device. So I'm curious with the CRAN how that will work with iPads and if you'll be able to use it with two iPads more easily by just hitting a button and it just talking to that new iPad and how it'll work with being in proximity to multiple iPads at the same time and perhaps even if you could use an Apple Pencil over Bluetooth and a Logitech CRAN at the same time on a single iPad. That could be really interesting for school use of people sharing a device and drawing and making notes on on an iPad that way. So that's just something I'm curious about how that's going to work. And I'm really curious as well if we'll get an Apple Pencil version 2 this summer with that same connection protocol of that single frequency that's talking only to this new low-end iPad. I'm really intrigued by that, and I think that's a really cool advancement. And it's been a frustration of mine with using the Pro with just that Bluetooth connection being so uh, tied to a single device at a time. So that's really cool. I'm really disappointed with this new iPad's lack of the smart connector, and I'm curious if that will arrive next year or if this will remain a Pro feature. I think keyboards are something that everyone should be using or should have the ability to use and Bluetooth isn't the best solution for that and the fact that Logitech is making a case that uses the lightning connector to talk to the keyboard is kind of sad that they have to do that and I wonder if more companies will start to use that lightning connector and what that means for the smart connector going forward and I really hope that isn't the case and I really hope the smart connector lives on and becomes a standard feature next year with that year's new low-cost iPad in 2019. Another really disappointing aspect of this new iPad with pencil support, which is great, is the lack of ProMotion in that iPad. For me, the pencil experience was just okay originally with that first-generation iPad Pro. It wasn't until the second-generation Pro with ProMotion that the pencil really clicked for me. That faster refresh rate really makes the pencil a tool beyond anything else you can experience with a stylus. And the fact that the new $329 iPad doesn't have ProMotion, I think really downplays how great the pencil can be. And I wonder if that will make an impact to anybody uh, using that. And I'd I'd hope that uh, ProMotion does make it down at some point to the low cost iPad because it really does make a huge difference. And if you're buying an iPad just for pencil support, that is something to at least try in the Apple Store. Try the second generation iPad Pro 
and then try it on the $329 iPad and see if it's worth that money to you for that upgrade. And maybe wait until the summer and you may be able to get some new refurbished iPad Pro second gens for a lower cost as we get new models coming out, I'd imagine, this summer. So the other thing that is curious is that it remains a 9.7 inch iPad you know, device. They didn't go with 10.5, and I wonder why that is. It's probably just a pricing thing, but I love the 10.5 inch size, and I would hope that eventually we just get rid of 9.7, and 10.5 is the new standard. Uh, the other interesting thing is weight. The 10.5 inch iPad Pro is 0.4 inches taller, 0.2 inches wider, and the exact same weight as this 9.7 inch device. It's a little bit thinner, the 10.5, but I wonder, is the battery a little bit battery a little bit better in the 9.7 as a result of this? I'm not sure. Another thing to note about this new iPad is it does not support HDR movies. It does not have that wide color gamut. So uh, if you're using your iPad for entertainment, that is just something of note. Another entertainment thing to note is the new iPad still has the old style speakers, no four speaker design like the Pros. So for an entertainment perspective, the Pro is still a lot better from its screen being better as well as sound. Uh, finally, I just want to mention some stuff about iWork. Now I'm going to do a deep dive in the iWork in a future episode, but something I will say is I really hope more tools for ebook creation come to pages. This is a great second step, I should say, as you could export EPUB before. But I really hope more tools come over because iBooks Author still has a ton of more fe- ton more features that make that the ultimate ebooks creation tool. And I would really hope that we get more awesome tools for the iPad to make ebooks in the future. So more to come on the iWork updates, some really cool Apple Pencil updates in those apps. But with that said, let's get to today's interview with Ged about Linea Sketch. Enjoy. I'm here today with Ged Mayhew of the Icon Factory. Welcome, Ged. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for being on the show. So your company, uh, Icon Factory, recently updated one of their apps, Linea Sketch, to version 2. And there's some substantial things in here. So I wanted to have you on the show to discuss both the updates in this and the app in general. So I guess the first question I have for you is, what is this app and how is it different from the other drawing and sketching apps out there? Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Linea Sketch is it's basically a digital sketch pad for your iPad. There are a lot of sketching apps out there on the App Store. Some of your listeners may be familiar with 53's Paper or Sketch Pro or Procreate, even Apple Notes. There's no shortage of sketching apps out there. We developed it to hit a sweet spot in between the huge professional tools that are available in Procreate that we found intimidating for the average user and to be more powerful than the bare basic stuff that Apple provides in Apple Notes or 53's Paper. We came up with it because after Apple introduced the Apple Pencil and the iPad Pro, you know, we really love that combination of hardware. And we started using it all the time to sketch concepts for, for our work. We, we do icon and interface design by trade. After the iPad and the Apple Pencil came out, I think it was in November 2015, I personally started sketching all of my brainstorming concepts and rough stuff right in Apple Notes. And it was brilliant the way that Apple had implemented it. And it was the closest thing I could find to drawing with a real pencil, but in digital form. I love that about it, but I didn't love Notes' limitations as far as coloring, there were no layers, things that kept me from having being com- completely happy with it. And at the same time, I don't use Procreate to do basic sketching. It's far more of an, a, a pro tool for painting and illustrating, I think, than just simple sketching. So we wanted to create something that was in between that. Myself and Troy Gall, who's the lead developer on Linea Sketch, we collaborated together to come up with what was then just Linea. It turns out a lot of people felt the same way that we did. They wanted something that was a little bit more powerful than paper and notes, but not as intimidating as Procreate. It's been pretty successful so far. That's good to hear. When you mentioned the Apple Pencil, what does it mean to be an Apple Pencil first app? What kind of features are you able to implement 
knowing most of your user base, I, I'd hope have, has an Apple, Apple Pencil. I'm not sure if you have data on if that's accurate or not, but I'd, I'd hope it's true. We don't actually know what percentage of our users use the Apple Pencil and what and who doesn't. We looked at it as when we approached the app, we said, okay, we're going to design it for people who have an Apple Pencil. And that meant, you know, making sure that its latency was practically non-existent, making sure that it took advantage of the fine grainness of the Apple Pencil, the amount of data that it inputs into the app, also the tilt and pressure of it, things like that. There's also interface elements in Linea that you can manipulate with the Apple Pencil that you can't with your finger or even with another third-party stylus, really. For example, you can adjust layer opacity directly by tapping on the little tiny sliders right next to the layer palette and adjusting them up and down. You just can't do that with your finger. Because the touch targets are too big, right? Exactly. You couldn't manipulate it if you wanted to with a fingertip. But with the pencil, you can. And so there are a lot of little considerations throughout the app for that kind of affordance for the Apple Pencil. They're not necessary. You don't need to adjust the layer opacity with the Apple Pencil. You can always open the layer and do it with the main slider and things like that. You get these extra little power features if you happen to be using an Apple Pencil. Yeah, and one of my favorite features is the the touch eraser. So there's no eraser on the back of an Apple Pencil, but right. if you're using the Apple Pencil in your app, it you know defaults to just your your finger will erase and your pencil will mark, which right, makes total right. sense. It's totally like what you know drawing on a whiteboard. You know you'll you'll sketch something and then you're like ah I don't like that and you just put your finger on the screen and just erase it and it's really intuitive. People love that part of Linea. With version two, it sounds like in, you using it in your day job. Is Zipline one of your favorite new features as someone that makes icons? And t- <laughs> I think it is, yeah. For those who don't know, Zipline, the original version of Linea had no way to draw straight lines within the app. There was no built-in ruler. And there's no stencils or anything like that. So if you wanted a straight line, you kind of had to eyeball it, or you had to use a physical ruler and put it on top of your iPad screen and draw a straight line. It was okay for the 1.0 release. The more we used it, the more we wanted straight lines and users just that was like the number one request along with being able to make selections and things. They want to be able to make straight lines quickly and easily. So we came up with zip line. You can draw a, a kind of a wavy line in linear and then just hold at the end and the app automatically straightens it for you. But you can also just tap and hold and place a, a zip point and then move your pencil to or your finger to another place and tap and hold, and then it will connect the dots between those two points. And in that way, you can create polygons like hexagons, triangles, whatever you want, just by placing long-held points on the screen. Nice. And in the settings, you can adjust how long that hold needs to be. Right, exactly. Yeah. And you'd be surprising how useful that is. I mean, it's, it's just... Once you get used to it and once you know that it's there, it's really a big thing. And our users have loved it from a personal standpoint. I, I love it too. I do a lot of icon sketching and I put things in bounding boxes a lot. So I have to draw squares and container shapes mm-hmm. quite often. And the zip line comes in handy for that. And it even works with the tilted line too. Like if you put the pencil kind of tilted on the screen and draw a zip point and a zip point, it will fill that with a gradiated line. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it takes in, into account the the pressure you, you press, too, when you place the point. So you can draw a line that is heavier on one end and lighter on the other with just you know different degrees of pressure, which is kind of cool. Very cool. As far as the tool set, currently there's a technical pencil, a classic pencil, a felt tip pen, a wide tip marker, and an eraser. How did you guys come upon those set of tools? And the one that I'd hope at some point comes in is a... Uh, fountain pen like a uh, tool a, a nib t- yeah yeah we can adjust uh, yeah. flexibility and stuff uh, i'm a huge yeah. fountain pen uh, geek yeah. uh, so to say the pencils were the tools that the whole app was built around because we love sketching in apple notes and apple notes is sketching was so good we wanted linea to be as good or better than apple notes and that was always the goal when we were designing linea was to get the pencils to feel as close to analog pencils as possible. And we worked a lot on those pencils. We worked weeks and weeks to make sure that the pencils were exactly right. Compared them to every major other sketching and drawing app in the app store to their pencil marks and made sure that ours were better than theirs. And once we had that done, then we're like, okay, what else do we need besides the pencils in order to do this work? Yeah. 
one was the the pen, which has ended up being, I consider it to be a fine tip Sharpie. It draws a single uniform line. It doesn't have pressure weight to it or opacity to it. It is just simply a line tool that lets you get really uniform lines all the way around. And then there's the marker, which is basically in lieu of no fill tool, a big fat nib in order to fill as much of the areas in screen as you can. There will probably be a fill tool that will come yeah. eventually. And a lot of people lately have been saying that they want that, what you're saying, which is a, a, a pen that varies in weight as you use it. And we're really thinking about adding that too, along with hopefully I really, really, really want to do it this year too. I really want to add a watercolor brush. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. To the app to color in, in a more painterly way or more artistic, you know, to get more subtle shading and coloring and things. Watercolor brushes are tricky to get right. And when we add these tools, we want them to be, like I said, best in class so that they stand up to the pencil tool. It's going to be tricky, but I think it'll be worth it when they come. Yeah. With the eraser, I noticed on the website kind of tip about using it with Zipline. Can you explain kind of the benefit of Zipline with an eraser? Yeah, so if you shade an area on the screen, like if you just use your pencil and do like a tilted shaded area or something like that, of course you can erase with your finger, you know, and and clean that shaded area up if it's coming up against an edge that you need to clear or something like that. But if you select the eraser, then you can use the zip line function to just draw a, a wavy line and then hold down and then the zip line will actually erase what would be the line if you're using a drawing tool. It's a way to clear an edge quickly from a portion of the sketch perfectly straight way. And it helps create really crisp, clean shading areas, things like that. It's like, it's like putting down a ruler on the, on your piece of paper and erasing along that ruler. So you get a crisp erased edge. Yeah. And it's something that, uh, probably works a lot better on digital mechanisms versus trying to use a electric racer or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. That's one of the, the beauties of digital sketching. You know, you can do things that you can't do in the real world. So besides Zipline, what were the big additions in 2.0? The big, big one is the move transform feature. The, we added a scissors icon, a single icon on the main interface that lets you tap and then lasso any portion of your sketch. And what Linea will automatically do is select down through all five layers and allow you to move that, transform it. You can copy it, paste it, stretch it, rotate it, flip it, duplicate it, cut it, all of those things in a straightforward way. You can also, though, and which is different in Linea than most other apps, since most drawing apps that have layers have like an infinite number of layers or near infinite, there's like, you know, Procreate, you can have, I don't know how many layers you can have in Procreate, but you can have 100 layers yeah. in Procreate. You know, and going through and deselecting those layers to manipulate them is not feasible. So you can't really do that in Procreate. But in Linea, we only have five layers, and we did that on purpose. So if you have stuff across different layers, say you have an inking layer at the top, and then you have a colored layer beneath that, and then you have a shaded layer underneath that. So when you select the portion of the sketch, if you only want to duplicate the inking layer, you can just turn off the other two layers and then copy the inking layer or vice versa. Or you can copy all three or transform all three or just one. If you have to do duplicates of things or you have to do a series of things like colored shapes or clothing design or storyboarding or whatever, and you want to color them in different ways, it's really quick and easy to just copy a portion of the sketch, duplicate it, move it over and then color underneath it in a separate, different way. Very nice. Okay, so yeah, I'm seeing it now. There, the little check mark that you can select before you start moving it around. Right. We added a whole bunch of other iOS features. We added split screen support. We added drag and drop support. We also added support for portrait drawing. If you hold the iPad in portrait and create a new sketch, it will automatically create the drawing in portrait mode. But you can also convert any old landscape drawing to portrait. Just put your fingers on the screen and rotate the canvas 90 degrees and then close the sketch. And when that happens, then Linea remembers, okay, you want this to be a portrait drawing. I'm going to change its orientation. Oh, very nice. That reminds me of the, I think the iPod Nano, the square touchscreen watch one. You could yeah, rotate yeah. the screen that way, I think, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. The other major feature we added was the ability to import images into layers. You can tap on an empty or a full layer and then select 
an image from the camera roll or take a picture. You can select from Dropbox, your files menu anywhere, and then import the image in, resize it, place it, rotate it, whatever. And then when you're done, you hit OK. And then, of course, you can adjust its opacity and sketch right on top of that or whatever you need to do. I've been using that a lot for actually marking up screenshots and things or stuff I want to post on Twitter. Like sometimes there'll be a couple different images that I want to composite into one image. I'll bring them into Linea. I'll import the first image into a layer and then that second image into a layer and then either like erase them or move them together, composite them however, and then mm-hmm. export them out of Linea back into the camera roll for posting on social media, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I was wondering the most common use case, the marking up and annotating or I imagine some people would probably import and trace over things to make them, you know, as practice to get good at certain drawings. Right. And then you can drag and drop an image in. Oh, one of the drag and drop features I noticed is you're able to drag out, do an export, and I believe yeah. you can do the lasso to just drag out just part of it. Correct. That's a setting within the app. Yes. What was the decision process in making that a user-picked setting to enable to opt into that? When we were testing drag and drop, we were finding for some of us that drag and drop was getting in the way of transforming the selection within the app. Sometimes you'll tap and hold on a selection and you're not quite sure where you want to move it to. You like have a little bit of a delay before you decide. Yeah. Or you hold too long on the selection and then you move and place it. And as soon as you hold too long, iOS assumes you want to drag and drop it. And so it comes out of Linea and goes into the drag, the drag well. That was, for some of us, getting frustrating to, to use. We just said, okay, we're going to make this an option to turn. You're going to have to explicitly turn drag and drop on. If you drag and drop content into or out of Linea more than you do internal transformations, then they probably would want that. Yeah, and if you're doing an export, it's quick right. enough to turn it on and off for that one export when you're ready for right. it. There's no other way to get content drag and dropped except tapping and holding on it. There's no other gesture that iOS provides in order to do that. That, of course, is used for a move in Linea. You move your selection with a drag and drop. And so those two gestures kind of conflicted, and we just wanted to have a way to turn that off if you didn't really want it. Yeah, I run across that problem in Pixelmator a, a couple times. I also think it might have benefit for the user to read how that feature works in the settings. You know, tap and hold, and this is what happens. Yeah, it's a thing that not a whole lot of users, I think, even know about. You know, a lot of them still have to learn how to use drag and drop in iOS 11. It's not natural. It doesn't feel that way to me anyway yet. I don't know if it's been around long enough to be ubiquitous enough or not, but I mean, yeah. as we, as we go forward, more more and more people know about it and learn about it, and then you know, it becomes more second nature. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So the app is you know used for sketching and artists and things like that. But what kind of interesting use cases have you seen from users? I know there's a lot of templates that were added in 2.0 as part of that part of user feedback and what they were trying to use the app for. It's really surprising how, I mean, when, that's the beauty of software development, you know, whenever you create an app, even though you design it and you intend it for one thing, there's always going to be people that use it for something you never even thought of before. They just go and they're like, oh, I'm using your app to do this and this and this. And you're like, what? Wow. Okay. <laughs> never expected that, you know. And we have one of our beta testers. He's awesome. His name's David Sinclair. He's also a developer. And he's used Linea to completely design his chicken coop oh, wow. like as a blueprint layout for yeah. the chicken coop both in like the top floor plan the side view even an isometric view everything with measurements and everything so he's got it all laid out you know it's exactly the wood that he has to cut and put together and you know and all of that i never would have expected people to actually use it as a a, a tool to help build things which is pretty cool we also have a couple other testers. They do storyboarding for TV and film. We've even had people at Pixar use Linea for storyboarding, and uh, they have certain requests that they want for their feature sets. And it's really cool to hear people using your app to do things like that. Got to be a huge thrill to hear, you know, Pixar is you know using your app to make their yeah. amazing films. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. 
I had another person who uses it to do rough keyframe animation cells. We added a specific function in Linnaeus. When you're inside the canvas, you can add another sketch without leaving, and then you can step back and forth with the little arrow keys under the action menu, back and forth, back and forth, from one sketch to the next. And we did that specifically for the people who were using it to animate. So they could draw on one canvas and then step forward, draw another one, step forward, and then page back, 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 you know, forward, 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 back through and see their animations, how they would look in almost like an onion skin mode. Wow. That's really fascinating. That's really cool. And then there is just standard, you know, notepads if people want to just take it, use it for writing notes. Right. Surprisingly, a lot of people like to use Linea Sketch for note taking. Now with portrait support, even more so because it feels like a legal or a real notepad. The new templates in there for lined rules and things. You can just bring up a, a new page and start taking notes, draw things. It doesn't go into the depth of some of the other apps like Notability in the App Store. It doesn't you know, translate your handwriting. It doesn't have character recognition or anything like that. But it is a really quick and easy way to take notes. Yep, um, and uh, iCloud Sync is there, so you can look at reference the stuff that on your iPhone if you need to pull it up, right? Yeah, exactly, and you know you can get stuff onto your Mac really quickly with Linea Link too. So you can, if you have stuff that you have in Linea Sketch on your iPad and you need it on the desktop, it's a cinch to get it from one to the other. Yeah, and continuing on with that train of thought, exports. So the app uh, supports a lot of different formats, including uh, Photoshop's PSD format. How well does that work, uh, setting Linea stuff over the Photoshop and Pixelmator, and how much stuff is lost in translation, so to speak? It works really well, and we're, we're really lucky because Troy, the lead engineer on Linea, used to work at Adobe. He's intimately familiar with all of the file formats there and wanted to make sure that we could export things and have them work well in Photoshop. Especially for us, we continue to use Photoshop in our day-to-day work. So we wanted to make it so that we could get sketches out of Linea Sketch into Photoshop, including all of the layer data and all of that really quickly with no loss of anything and it would every, everything would just translate. We'd like to be able to do it in reverse too eventually where you could take a Photoshop file and then put that into Linea. Yeah. And it would keep all of the layer data and you know if it's five, if right, it's yeah. more than five, then it has to merge the layers or you have to decide which layers you want to discard, you know, or things like that. That's that way is a little bit trickier, but we'd like to get there eventually for that. Definitely. So a big part of sketching and drawing is colors. You know, it's just not black and white anymore. Um, so in the app, there's a lot of just built-in good color sets to work in. But there's also the ability to have custom colors in there. There's a nice little color wheel. You can sort and pick which color you want. And there's also drag and drop capability. You can drag and drop the color out of your app into a different app. The first question I have is my day job, I deal a lot with very specific like hex codes for certain colors. And is there any way to put in like a hex code to get the color that I, that the exact color I want? Not currently, no. Okay. That's something that's definitely coming. Color improvements are high on the priority list for a future update for Linea. The original app shipped with this notion of the app was going to have a fixed set of colors. You can add custom colors. You couldn't put in like specific color you know, hex values or RGB values. But the basic components of the color that were already in the app would automatically generate tints and shades for you. We did that for a bunch of reasons, but the main one was because color handling in apps like paper were so unwieldy and just frustrating. Paper has this neat UI where you can mix colors. Yeah, You can take one color and then add another color to it and mix it and get in between values and everything, which is cool. But if you need to get back to that exact color in paper, you have to use up a well. You know, you have to drag mm, color yeah. into a well and keep it there and not move it. Getting back to those colors in, in paper was a pain in the butt, too. Keep paging and paging and paging to get through different color sets. And so we wanted to make a way to get colors in the app and have automatically – exact tints and shades of every primary color that you could quickly and easily get to without having to reselect everything every single time and making sure the value was exactly the same and so on. So we came up with this UI where the the colors are on the side and then the tints and the shades are, are branches of those primary colors. 
and it doesn't take up much room on the screen either. And that's one of the things that I really wanted to make sure we did right in Linear Sketch. It takes up the minimal amount of space to get the most amount of colors you can get on the screen. When you add the ability to add your own exact color values, and I think that will help fill in that hole of functionality there that people are looking for. Yeah. Now for drag and drop, I, I've seen uh, this is on stage originally back when drag and drop was announced, the ability to like drag and drop colors, but I've never really heard it explained of how does this all work? What do you, what other <laughs> apps work with this? This is yeah, probably the well, more complicated version of drag and drop than it's yeah. a really new feature in iOS. You know, it's, it hasn't been around that long, but apps that support it can basically drag a color chip from themselves, just like you could drag a, a selection of a drawing, you tap and hold on the color and then it turns into a little chip and you pull it out of the app and then you go into the other app where you're heading to your destination into their color well or color picker or whatever and then you drag it in there and release and that color is transferred from one app to another. I know that this works in Procreate. They have color groups Mm -hmm. in Procreate that you can set. You can click and drag a color chip in one of the groups out of Procreate and into an open well in Linea Sketch. So if you have a specific color or set of colors that you like and you want to be able to use those in Linea, you can do that. I think the support for it will get better over time. Again, it's brand new. Yeah. Not a whole lot of apps support it. Procreate is the only one I know of right now. Okay, yeah, I was wondering, are there others? Like, I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm trying to I, think because, yeah, yeah. It's, it is new. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you support because it's, it's a very powerful feature for – you know, once more apps start taking advantage of it. I wish you could do this on the Mac. It'd be awesome. Right. You know, if you could drag a color from Photoshop into Illustrator, for example. Yeah. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? definitely. But and, you can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> and besides color wells, you could potentially drop a color onto some kind of sketch in another program and just that part of the sketch would be colored that way or something you know right yeah that'd be very handy and just nifty i guess are there any other hidden or not as well known features in the app that you wish more people knew about it's funny because when we were getting ready to release the new version a couple of us were like you know i i don't know any way you can do this in the app and well some of us were like well you actually you can do that <laughs> you know and then they're like whoa i didn't even know you could do that you know so there are, there are things in linear sketch that not all of us even knew completely about and so what we ended up doing was we created a tips and tricks page for the app and we put that up on the app's website and they outline some of the more hidden features and things that you can do one of them is you can actually when you go to transform a selection you can use the apple pencil and you can click on the gray bounding box around the selection and actually use that to rotate the selection instead of using your fingers inside it's a little bit more precise method of doing rotation than using your fingers when you zoom in on a sketch the further in you zoom the smaller the eraser becomes if you need to erase a little tiny area if you try to do it at normal 100 percent zoom level the eraser may be too fat to fit in that area but as soon as you start to zoom in with your fingers you pinch zoom pinch zoom get way in there then the eraser scales in proportion with the zoom level which means you can erase really tiny tiny areas on the canvas which is kind of cool very cool yeah one of my favorite things that most people don't know or don't necessarily need all the time is presentation mode you can use airplay and once you turn that on if you go to the action menu inside the canvas you can go into presentation mode and present the drawing up on a tv monitor or overhead projector but what happens is the people that are viewing that projection only see the sketch they don't see the tools or the color palette or the layers palettes so if you're in a giving a like say a classroom lecture or something like that you can sketch and draw and and present notes right on the screen and you can switch tools switch layers switch colors and they won't even see that until you begin to draw which is a pretty cool handy tip for for people who need that kind of thing it's great for teachers those kind of people that show diagrams or drawings to groups of people the people that use that feature really love it there aren't a whole lot of them but we're glad we put it in for teachers yeah no it it sounds handy for sure. No Apple TV app <laughs> yet. Like, let me <laughs> no, no. Yeah. <laughs> you can use it. It's great for you. So like, you know, Pictionary or something like that. You can, you can play a game with your friends and just pass the iPad around and draw in linear on the, on the TV, you know, just kind of yeah. cool. For getting 
things out. We talked about you know Photoshop export and things like that. The share canvas feature, that's just a pure export of the entire canvas. Is that what that is? And in what format does that go out in? There are two different ways to export within the app. If you do share canvas, it's like posting to Twitter or Facebook or something like that. It takes whatever is currently in view. It's just the whole canvas in one big lump. In whatever background you have selected, that kind of stuff. Right. Yep. Right, exactly. There's the other one, which is crop and export, which lets you bring the handles in and crop in on a portion of the sketch. You can turn off the background. You can save out transparent background. You can turn on the grid if there's a grid or template that you've used in the background. And you want to include that in the export. You can turn that on and it will also be included in the export. And then, there, of course, there's the f- file formats. There's PNGs. JPEG and Photoshop files for that as well. Okay. We'd like to we'd like to include yeah. like preset formats at some point in the future, like square, two by three, sixteen by nine, you know, that kind of stuff, so that you could just quickly tap those and get them to the exact proportion that's on the to do list. Okay. Yeah, that'd be nice. The final question I have is regarding just the organization of your sketches. How did you guys come up with the different projects that, that you put a bunch of different sketches into? Um, it follows basically pretty straightforward layout of a lot of what other the other drawing apps do too. They have an overall project view, and then within that they have subfolders, and then within that are the actual sketches. We wanted to make sure that you didn't have all of your drawings in one big collection, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah. you're going to be using it for work. So you want to be able to organize them by project, for sure. We added iCloud backup, so we want to be able to quickly download them from iCloud or, you know, put them up to iCloud as well. So you can do that on groups of folders, like for an entire project folder, you can say, put this up on iCloud. And take it off your device to free up storage if you need to. Right, exactly. If If your device is low in storage, you can do that. Just put them up on iCloud. You'll still see previews of them on the device, but they're not physically there taking up space, kind of like iCloud photos. Have you considered, I'm just using it now, an ability to somehow export an entire project as a batch. I don't know what format that would leave it as, but... uh. Yeah, definitely. It would be great to be able to, like, say, for example, like, export this entire project as a PDF file. Yeah. You know, a multi-page PDF or something like that. Or with the animation example you had of... uh, Right, right. Yeah, export all this back-to-back as some kind of, yeah. Right, like, take all the sketches in this one folder and, say, consider them as frames in a GIF or something like that, right, and yeah. e- export them as a as an animated GIF. You know, yeah, that'd be great. And we have something like that on the to do list, but I don't know how high up on the priority it is. But that would be very cool. Definitely. Anything else we didn't cover that you'd like to talk about? There is one Easter egg in the app. I don't know if you know about it or not, but it's kind of fun. If you go to the project folder, the main project root view, mm-hmm. and you pull down on the screen, if you pull down for a little bit, you'll see the Icon Factory logo. Yeah. But if you keep pulling down, there's another hidden little thingy up there, and you can tap it, and it will enable a secret template that you can use when you sketch. And it actually is a role-playing game character sheet. It's a Dungeons & Dragons character sheet that you can use when you play Dungeons & Dragons with your friends. So, Oh, wow. Very cool. Yeah, you don't have to have a physical character sheet. I'm doing it now. Out. i got to say, this is it's a lot of work to try to do the scroll. <laughs> you know, like yeah, exactly. Hold it out the one. It take, yeah, uh, this yeah. is a cool <laughs> Easter egg. I didn't want to make it too easy to find. Right, yeah. I like this. But it's this there. Cool. And then uh, when you go into the templates, it's under the hexagonal grid, I think. Then you can tap that, and then you'll be able to turn the character sheet on. And you can fill in all of, all of your D&D character stuff, your constitution and your intelligence and all of that. It's, it's fun. Very cool. It's, yeah. Who inspired that one? Some of us play Dungeons and & Dragons, and we also use Linea to take notes and stuff while yeah. we're playing. So we're like, well, why don't we just go one step further and put an actual character sheet in there and save some headache because I never have one when I need one. Right, yeah, that's great. Well, Love we're it. just like, ah, we'll make one and throw it in. So I made a custom one and put it in there. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, it's been fantastic chatting with you and learning more about this wonderful application that's out in the App Store now, version 2.0. And you guys also have Twitterific for iOS as well as Mac and couple other apps out there you go to iconfactoryapps.com for information on all of your apps and linea-app.com and that's where you'll find uh, the tips and tricks section that you mentioned earlier correct yeah 
Any other yeah. places you want to plug or mention? No, that, I mean, that's the big one. If you're looking for our software, Icon Factory apps is the best place to go. Of course, there's just the Icon Factory as well, but that's everything. So software-wise, it's Icon Factory apps. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much again for your time. Oh, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I hope everyone has fun. Thanks for listening to iPad Pros. You can find the show notes over at iPadPros.net. Please leave a review in the Apple Podcast app. Just search for iPad Pros, leave a review. I'd really, really appreciate it. And you can send your feedback to iPadProsPodcast at gmail.com. And we'll be back next time for another episode of iPad Pros. Thanks for listening.